Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast, the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions from the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, social media. Everything really depending on a guest to talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Perma Otis. On social media, you know me as PDV, so you'll recognize my guests from a lot of cool TV shows and movies, including the Colorado Space, the OA, Tagged, Mr. Young. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to say that. Brendan Myers with us. Brendan, welcome to Pop Turner, man. Hey, yeah, thank you for having me. Happy to be on. No problem. Um... You were kind of talking about before we started about, you know, getting like working on like a short film. I mean, it's important to kind of wear many hats in the entertainment industry and not just act or not just write. You know, how important is it for Brendan Meyer to wear many hats? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm such a big movie fan in general. I, I just love watching films and, and I've always been interested in that stuff. And so, yeah, in the last couple of years, I've just kind of finally been able to, uh, you know, just start directing a few short films and just getting some experience uh, as a director. I did one last year. Um, with some friends up in Canada, actually, some some it was uh, adapted from a play that one of my best friends since I was a kid wrote, and another really close friend of mine that I've known, and then yeah, just gearing up to do another one with some some friends uh, as well, uh, yeah, American friends. So, and yeah, you it's are, been fun. And, and I believe you are Canadian, correct? I am. Yeah. So I was uh, I was born I was born near Ontario, actually, uh, near Toronto, um, in, in Kitchener, but I, I mainly grew up uh, in Alberta. In Edmonton, that's kind yeah. of where, and that's where we're, my parents. We're are Canadian too. We're in we're in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. So. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so you know exactly where. Well, where that why I mean I mean I know Mr. Young. I think was on Nickelodeon for a little bit. Was it not? Uh, Disney XD. Disney where, XD. Where sorry, Disney XD. It was where, but, where it was in the states. Yeah. Hey, man, YTV. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's where yeah, I kind of watched it. It was pretty cool, man. Like you know, being a kid, obviously as well, being a Canadian kid, we grew up watching YTV a lot. So to actually be on YTV was was pretty wild. I mentioned it. I mean, I'm noticing that the horror genre is just like a genre that's just taking over the world right now. Like, it's pretty crazy. And you're part of one of these films that's part of this, like, crop of films, like, mm-hmm. that people are watching on, like, Shudder and Netflix and Hulu. Like, mm-hmm. Colorado Space with Nick Cage. I mean, that movie is amazing. Like, how does it feel to kind of be part of that kind of, like, there's a lot of big things happening in the horror genre right now, Brendan. Yeah, I mean, horror, there's so many great horror films that have come out in the last few years uh, from just so many different different countries and different directors, new voices and stuff. And Spectre Vision, the company, you know, they did Color Out of Space, um, have done some amazing stuff recently, like Mandy and a lot of other things that they've done. Um, so, yeah, I kinda, that's one of those ones that I kind of knew from the beginning when I was lucky enough to get it that it was probably going to turn out to be pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, I was really, really excited. Uh, and it's been great to see it find an audience. You know, it came out earlier this year and then, it's just been great to hear from as different friends and different people see it. And yeah, it's, it's really um, found a great life. Uh, well, I feel like that movie is a good example of what I'm about to say. I mean, the directors of photography and the cinematographers and of, of TV and film in these, like in the last couple of years are just kind of the unsung heroes. Like they're hitting it out of the park. Like that movie just looks so good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it was cool. I remember even when I was, first auditioning for it, they sent a little lookbook talking about, you know, obviously the use of color and some of the techniques they were going to do camera wise. And yeah, I was really, really uh, intrigued by it even before I booked it. It just, and they really, they literally delivered on it. And it's cool because it was all filmed actually in Portugal. So that, and they uh, largely, they kind of found that for people who've seen it, they found that old house and kind of constructed a lawn around it. And it, it was just a really, really kind of magical place when the fog would roll in and it was pretty and, awesome. and I do have to ask because you're a first timer on the show, but this is the first time this question's ever being asked, and I'm so excited that we're able to ask this. How was it to work with Nicolas Cage? <laughs> uh, I mean, it was it was so awesome. I mean, he's a really cool guy, and and uh, you know, he was very very easy to work with, fun to hang out with on set. Very funny guy, very um, personable, and just just a big movie fan. You know, like talking earlier about how I love movies. You know, he's just I, if anyone who's seen interviews with him can see that he's a real you know, cinephile, real lover of cinema. And, you know, in between takes, you know, he's talking about different movies and even choices he makes, you know, he'll be like, you know, this, I'm wearing these glasses to reference Straw Dogs, Dustin Hoffman. And, you know, it's it's really cool to kind of be in the room uh, for that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's the stuff I'll always take away. But yeah, I mean, he's definitely, he's just one of those kind of iconic guys who is a great actor, but also sort of iconic as a movie star. You know? Absolutely. I kind of, we talked about kind of horror, like as kind of like a trendy, very popular genre right now. You're such a big film buff. Um, what have you kind of noticed 
trend wise in the last couple of years about certain kind of ways things are being shot? Like, have you noticed something about kind of like film in the last couple of years specifically? Like maybe like how it's transformed or like anything kind of that's caught your eye about how film mm. has been kind of evolving over the last couple of years, Brendan? Hmm. I mean, I, it's interesting. I think, I don't know if there's been a, a, a massive shift in terms of the way different things are, are being shot, but it, it, it's interesting. It, it does seem like there's this great wave of kind of really interesting horror directors who just made their debut in a close succession. I think that's what, you know, Jordan Peele, Ari Aster, and then it just, there's these, you know, people who've kind of come out and, and really kind of made their name. I mean, they were, I guess, Peele was famous before, but as directors really made their name in the horror genre here. And so I don't know. I mean, you can see great, great horror movies back for many years, but for whatever reason, it just feels like we've gotten a lot in quick succession. I mean, maybe if I had time to really think about it, maybe there was another time where we got this many in a short period of time, but it just feels that way, right? Because so many yeah. people talked about Get Out, Us, Midsommar, Hereditary, all these things. And I mean, there's a million other ones. But there's just like, I think it's just kind of a testament of like, on a color out of space, color out of space, I think does this as well, because obviously it's so like, like it's not just about the cheap jump scares and the full out gore. Right. You know what I mean? There's like there's different ways to scare people. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that like something even like Colorado Space, which is so, I think that's what's interesting about it is that it's such a visual experience and is scary. But it, you know, it also has a lot of really interesting themes about you know what we do to the planet and and all these different things that kind of are, are bubbling under the surface too. So. I think that's what's really cool about a lot of horror films. And I don't want to say it's new because I think there's been amazing, thoughtful, interesting horror all through cinema, but it feels like there's just been so many great ones lately. Oh, absolutely. Um, another thing too is like, like you mentioned Jordan Peele and I look at it over like horror, I wouldn't say is like mainstream, but it's, it's kind of getting there right now with movies like get out and us, but like nerd culture, geek culture, like the comic book mm -hmm. stuff. Like, do you find that, isn't it weird that it's like mainstream now? Like, I remember like, get, like getting teased for having like a Spider-Man shirt. You know what I mean? Yeah, that is amazing. I mean, that's definitely something that has, that is, has been really cool to see is that, yeah, there, you know, there was these kinds of things that maybe not, not for any of the right reasons, but I guess you're right. Maybe became a fringe thing or, or something that wasn't cool. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I know I'm a nerd about many things, <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't seem like I'm, you know, it, I think being what's cool being a nerd is it just means you love something so passionately and it's weird. Sometimes it's like that, that is a weird thing, but it's been cool to see stuff and this specifically, you know, stuff like these comic books and things kind of rise to, to essentially be the biggest movies of the year every year. And I remember just, you know, I'm relatively young, but I do remember, I'm old enough to remember, you know, when, yeah, there was Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Yeah, there was this, but even in the early 2000s, it's like yeah, there wasn't the same sort of uh, saturation of superhero films, and they just they didn't they they were exciting, but they were no bigger than anything else. And now, especially with Marvel and everyone else, it's just taken off in a really cool way. And I feel like that's a pretty good segue to my next question because you mentioned like you are young. You're what people call like a young up and coming kind of storyteller <laughs> in this industry, right? And my question mm -hmm. is, you know, you're someone who's had. Um, who's had a chance to kind of work on a lot of cool projects already in your career, you know what I mean? And you're kind of looking for the next projects and you're always working, you're always grinding and everything. And I find it interesting because you're in a cool spot, Brendan, because, you know, um, there are people that will look at you in movies that color out of space or look at what you worked on mm -hmm. Tagged or the OA and be like, wow, like I one day maybe like want to be an actor like Brendan Meyer in one of these films. You know, they like look up to you, but at the same time, you're also young enough where you also have like aspirations and people kind of, you look up to as well in the industry as well. So you're kind of like a middleman. Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, I guess that it is an interesting thing. I mean, I think that's what's interesting about the career, uh, you know, as an actor is that it's, it's constantly challenging. You know, you, you can do different things, but you know, it, it, there's always, you're always back trying to get that next job, trying to, hopefully get better as an actor or as a creative person. And uh, so, I mean, yeah, it's kind of an eternal, it's that treadmill, you know, it's like you can, you know, have these great experiences and run, you know, a thousand miles. Um, and yeah, maybe longer than, than, you know, I've been fortunate. There's probably a lot of people that, you know, um, haven't been able, that are talented, that haven't even been able to do what I've been able to do. But yeah, as an actor, you're always looking forward as well. Right. And, and looking to hope, trying to get that next thing and hopefully trying to, um, you know, continue to work. So yeah, it's interesting. You're kind of, it's one, it's a lot of professions. You, you hit a certain point, right? You either are able to do this thing or you're not. Um, and that's it, you know, and you get your job and you try to keep yeah. it. Whereas acting is sort of a little more like this, you know? <laughs> 
I feel like there's a lot of like misconceptions and things about kind of the entertainment industry that people don't realize. For one, I mean, I ask this question a lot, like what are some misconceptions in your opinion? And like the obvious ones that come up, right? Or like, you know, you've been working on, you've been working in the industry for the, such a long time and then you have a breakthrough role where you have a lot of eyes on you, but then people just assume that that was like the first thing you ever right. like, did. And people didn't realize that you kind of put the work in 10 years prior type thing, right? Another one too is, thing, right? yeah. And another one too is what I want to talk to you about is the auditions. Like, I don't think people realize that your job as an actor is like auditioning. Like that's yeah. what you do. <laughs> no, absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, you know, you, I know for me, I mean, I, I couldn't even tell you how many things I've auditioned for probably this year. And obviously because of everything that's going on in the world, it's probably the slowest year it's ever been a, a normal year. It's like, yeah, you're just, there's so many auditions and you just, you really have to get to the point where you are able to do it. Cause it's that you have to hold both things in your mind, right? You have to care so much about it that you put a hundred percent of your effort in and, yep. and, and give as much as possible. You know, no matter, even if you think, oh, maybe I'm wrong for it or I'll never get this, you have to put that all out and go 100%. And then the other side of it is as soon as you're done, you have to try to kind of forget about it, you know? And I think, I think I'm, as I've gotten, you know, older and worked longer, I think I'm getting a little better, at least forgetting about it the first time. I mean, I think anytime you get a call back or get some interest, then you're really going to start to think, oh, do I have a chance to get this or not? But yeah, when it comes to these first reads that you do and you just do so many within the year through tapes and going in, you kind of have to just, do your best and then forget about it. <laughs> but another one's probably coming. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just like, cause, I, cause like, you know, you might be working on like, cause I just kind of, I'm fascinated about like how many things people audition for and then how mm. many kind of things they actually land, you know, like yeah. the ratio is not there. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, the ratio is so low and it's funny. Like I, I'm a big, um, a big golf fan. Uh, and I, I actually think that like the way golf, the PJ tour works sometimes is a little bit like acting and that I was watching it and they were talking about how, you know, they do like, I don't know, 40 events every year on the PJ tour. And like you win one a year, you look really great. And they talk about how, over a career, if you win, most of the guys in the Hall of Fame won like one big tournament and then won like 2% of all the tournaments that they went out for, you know, and because that's, that's, you know, um, impressive, right? Um, and, and that's kind of the way acting is so often, you know, you try to get just like that one good one and, uh, and, and then just try to get 2% because there's just, there's too much, you know, it's like you audition for so many things during the year. It, it, like you said, one thing like Color Out of Space out of, you know, 40, 40 plus auditions in a year feels like a good year. You know? Absolutely. And, you know, I think different, like I'm in Canada, right? So I'm watching Colorado space on Netflix. Mm -hmm. I think though they have different, different countries have different, like, is it on Netflix in the States as well? I think it's on shutter in the States. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, kind of that's Canada something I'm kind of, years. that's something that I'm, I'm trying to kind of get used to that. Like I can't assume like, cause it's on Netflix here in Canada. Right. Yeah. So we're love we're, yeah, yeah. we're loving it over here. Um, but, uh, no, it's, it's awesome. But Brendan, thank you so much for coming on pop Turative, man. I really enjoyed it. Oh no. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me on. This was Absolutely. Great. So where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? Yeah. Uh, Brendan KJ Meyer, uh, on Twitter and Instagram and uh, website, uh, Brendan Meyer .com. Uh, yeah, just, you can. People forget about stuff. the websites. Like, people still yeah. have websites. It's not just about the social one, media. Yeah. The main, the main way is really, you can find me just, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Brendan KJ Meyer. And well, Facebook too. Congrats on all the projects that you've done so far. And I wish you all the best in your future projects as well, Brendan. All right. Thank you, man. Well, this has been Pop Turn at youtube.com slash pop turn for previous episodes. And until next time, this is Brendan Meyer, BD Beats, signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.